Here is an issue I guess I've taken sides on, and that is that I believe the Russian invasion of Ukraine is uh, a, an act of war, and it is illegal, and probably that Putin and his regime have committed war crimes against the people of Ukraine. I'm on one side of this conflict, and that's the Ukrainian side, uh, as I think many New Zealanders are. And uh, for a conflict that was meant to be a lay-down misere, a walkover for the Soviet Army, uh, or not the Soviet Army, the Russian Army, it certainly hasn't been. And news in the last few days that Kurzon, a major uh, regional capital, has been recaptured, recaptured by the Ukrainians, has certainly been good news to those who are following the war from the perspective which I follow it. Also, we find that yesterday our government announces an extension of its infantry training program, which is being conducted in Britain by New Zealand Defence Force personnel, or their part of the training program. While we are reducing the number of New Zealanders assigned to that mission, we are extending the time of that mission so we continue to help train, train Ukrainian soldiers to go and fight the Russians in Ukraine. All good stuff. Meantime, though, questions being asked about the way immigration is treating war refugees, women and children fleeing the Ukraine who are leaving behind their husbands and men to fight and whether or not we're actually giving them a fair go. Well, to discuss all of this, um, we are joined now by the Ukrainian ambassador to Australia and New Zealand, uh, Vasil Marishnachenko, and I have to work on his surname, I'm sorry, uh, Vasil, but it's lovely, um, lovely to have you with us uh, again. Welcome to the platform. Yeah, thanks for, for having me. Good morning. Well, Vassal, there must be there must be some optimism or increasing optimism uh, amongst you and your countrymen about the way this war is is progressing. Absolutely, and especially the latest news about the liberation of Kherson. As you know, Kherson was the only regional capital that Russians have been able to capture, and they occupied it for eight months. So the, the, the liberation of Kherson is a major uh, political as well as military victory for us. And you've definitely seen the footage of all the people rejoicing. You've seen President Zelensky who visited Kherson uh, yesterday and um, the ceremony that he's done, uh, congratulating the troops, being there with the people. It's really huge. Yeah. What next, though? Because without... <laughs> I don't know, a negotiated peace, a negotiated withdrawal. Uh, you know, military conflict is not played out on television screens or through press releases. It is, it is bloody and brutal work. And there is still much of your country which is controlled or, or occupied by Russian troops. In the absence of a negotiated peace, the bloodshed, I imagine, will continue. Absolutely, every war ends with with, um, with the negotiations and uh, with a peace deal, and and uh, we'll be happy to do so once Russians withdraw from Ukraine entirely, and uh, we can restore our sovereignty uh, to the borders in 1991 uh, to be able to settle um, and and ha have a peace deal, and and most importantly, what is what 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 matters is actually to have guarantees that Russians won't invade us again. So so this is pretty much uh, the, the, the time frame that we have. We've been able to defend Ukraine for the past eight months, despite the predictions that we would fall in three days. Uh, we've uh, mounted a major um, a defense, but also a counter uh, offense. Yeah, which has been wildly able to successful. Repel. Yeah, yeah in, in Kharkiv region, in the north, now in the south. Uh, of course, we depend on our allies. We depend on the supply of weapons and military assistance coming from NATO as well as our non-NATO allies. And uh, the training that New Zealand is providing is important. As you know, we don't have a problem with drafting people in Ukraine. We have a problem with training, uh, training mm. and yeah, and 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 equipping those people, of course. And that's that's a big contribution towards. Uh, uh, peace uh, and towards defending democracy, mm. defending uh, human rights and all the basic values which are so important for every New Zealander. Yeah. Um, we talked to Mahi for Ukraine, a group uh, helping Ukrainian war refugees here who were calling for the government to be, I would say, more humanitarian, more understanding of the situation 
in which women and children uh, seeking temporary respite in New Zealand from the war in Ukraine are looking for. They made some interesting comparisons with the way Australians are treating Ukrainian war refugees and the way New Zealanders. Would you like to see our government show some more compassion in that regard? Look, it's very difficult for me as an ambassador to both Australia and New Zealand to make a comparison in that respect. And, of course, immigration policy is a sovereign right of every country um, to decide. Mm. And I understand those Ukrainians who are able to come to New Zealand, they have relatives in, in, mm. in, in New Zealand, whereas those who could come to Australia did not necessarily have to have relatives. Yeah, that's they, right. They could yeah. still apply and come. So it was a little bit uh, easier for them to come here. Yeah. But still, if you look at general numbers, we are still talking about very humble numbers because we only yeah. have, um, I don't know, 6,000 Ukrainians in Australia. I don't know, I think maybe yeah. around, what, what was that, the number in, in, in I think over 1,000 maybe in, yeah. in, in, in New Zealand. Yeah. But we're talking about 5 million Ukrainian refugees. In, yeah, in the, so in it's a dro- I suppose it's it is a drop in the ocean and we are a long way away. Um, that's the last time we spoke to... Uh, You said we could do with those LAVs, those light armoured vehicles. And what you told me was somewhat at variance with our government's official position. Have you made any um, progress on the LAVs? Look, uh, from what I understand, the LEVs that um, that uh, that New Zealand has, and this is what I was informed, is not is not in a right or good condition uh, to be transferred. And oh, okay. um, and of course, look, we we appreciate the, that we have um, bipartisan support in in mm. New Zealand. If New Zealand can help us more, we will be extremely thankful. If New Zealand could potentially procure something for us elsewhere in the EU, yeah. for instance, and supply it, we'll be extremely grateful for that. Yeah. Uh, we also, there are huge needs in Ukraine on the humanitarian side. Yeah. Russians have deliberately been destroying our uh, power generation and electricity grids. And we are in huge, there's a huge demand for uh, transformers, for power generators, uh, for actually, you know, because 40% of that, of that is destroyed in Ukraine. Many cities are in blackouts. Winter is coming. It's going to be brutal. So we need a lot of assistance there as well. And um, if, if New Zealand could help us with that. And, of course, in the long run, we'll need help with rebuild, with reconstruction. And uh, I'm engaging very closely with the Australian government on this. And I really hope that uh, uh, the government of Aotearoa could also join New Australia in that, in that respect and help Ukraine yeah. with reconstruction and rebuild. And yeah. by the way, I've been teaching Mekolaev, which is a southern city next to Kherson, mm. as a maritime region of Ukraine. And my pitch is to have an Anzac undertaken both Australia and New Zealand helping out with the ports and maritime infrastructure in uh, in Mykolaiv and Kherson regions. What a great idea. Vassal, I want to ask you, uh, you know, a lot of people would have said Ukraine is going to get wiped off the map, the Russians will roll in, they'll win. Here we are months down the road and it's that is anything but the story that has played out. Is there a danger, and I guess as I said, New Zealand is a long way away, that the world becomes complacent? that they look at the Ukraine and say, oh, they've got the Russians on the run, we don't need to worry about them too much. Is there a danger that your success is counterproductive when, in fact, you still need the support and encouragement of the rest of the world so that you can get through this terrible conflict? Look, there is always a danger because uh, wars are very tiring. There is fatigue with war. And, of course... um, uh, Putin is actually making a stake on that, and um, he's trying to wear off our major allies. Uh, Putin is doing everything possible to put pressure on the populations uh, in in Europe uh, throughout the winter that have to pay higher prices for for energy bills, for their utilities. Uh, the businesses are suffering in Europe, and in this respect, they're putting more pressure on the politicians in those countries uh, to end the war with the war soon. And there's always a danger. That, that, that as it progresses, uh, there will be more and more expectation for that war to, to end on, on no matter what conditions. But it's only up to us, Ukrainians, to decide when the war is over. Because, of course, uh, it's our territory which has been occupied. This is our people which get killed. This is our women which have been raped. This is our children which have been kidnapped and, you know, forcefully moved to Russia. And there are, you know, heinous war crimes which are being committed. And we, as a country, 
deserve to have our right to restore our sovereignty, to defend democracy, and end this war, of course, uh, eventually. Indeed you do, Vassal. I thank you very much indeed uh, for your time this morning. It is always good talking to you and getting, uh, I think, as close a perspective as we can on what is happening in your home country. I wish uh, you well, and we look forward uh, to talking to you again soon. Many thanks for having me. Cheers. Uh, Vassal uh, Maroshnachenko. Maroshnachenko. He is the ambassador to Australia and New Zealand for the Ukraine. Um, and it's not over there. Um, you know, and I sit here in New Zealand and we worry about, uh, well, I do still worry about five waters, as we're now going to call it. But at least someone ain't dropping bombs on me. Um, that's for real.